Hey guys, uh, before you start watching uh, this video right here, uh, I just want to real quickly just explain a couple things first uh, because this is different to any other video I've ever shown on my YouTube channel. So uh, I reckon I'll have a few people watch it that will be really confused um, and others that will come to it um, that, yeah, anyway, I just want to real quickly just explain a couple things first. Uh, so, so this video was taken back in 2018. Uh, back in 2018, there was the first ever Oceanic Damage Prevention Conference. Uh, and what they had is called a mock trial. So they uh, they basically set up, the, they gave a couple, a couple. so everyone in the room were all locators, everyone in the room were all located, all in the located in the industry, they were all in the located in industry, and they picked out a couple of random guys and they gave them a script and said, here's a couple of things guys, uh, we want you to play this role, play that role, play that role. Uh, obviously this is all made up, none of it is real. None of it is real. Everyone is made up, um, and they said to the guys, just play, play this role and just wing it, and just say what you think is, will be best to go within, within that script. Um, now, this was random, so I was there as a guest. I wasn't there to shoot this video, um, and, I've, and during the day, so, so on my, again, if, if, you, if you are a subscriber, if you watch my videos all the time, then you'll know I do a lot of vlogs and other things. Well, I should do a lot more, I don't do as much anymore, uh, of vlogs of showing you different events I go to and so forth. And I was there as a guest at this event and I was filming, doing a vlog at this event. And when they mentioned what they were gonna do, I thought I might set up a camera and try and record the whole thing. And that's what I did, I tried to rec record the whole thing. However, it's the first time I ever videoed anything like this before. Uh, and it is very, very poor. Uh, I'll admit now, the quality of this of this video, of this audio, of the rest of it, is very poor. So I apologize. Uh, obviously in hindsight, if I knew what I was doing at the time, I would have done it a lot differently. Uh, it was, yeah, spur of the moment thing. Uh, I, actually, I've got them here. Uh, so I, I basically had this camera here set up on a tripod, similar to this tripod I've got on right now. I had this set up on a tripod and just constantly recording. The issue is, this camera here records for 18 to 19, 20 minutes, uh, and then stops and then doesn't record anymore. And so I've got to press record again and it goes again. So a couple of times when you're watching, you'll see um, that it just cuts out and then it starts again and you'll miss a couple words. But you can get, for those, so this video is really for those of you that are in the locating industry. Um, uh, so the idea, so it's a mock trial. So uh, the, the idea is to show you that if something ever happened, uh, if you went out to a, uh, to a job and you missed something, uh, or someone blamed you for something and that you didn't think you did wrong, uh, which does happen to us guys, for those of us that have been in industry for a while, it does happen to us. The idea is to show you what it would actually be like in a trial, what it would actually be like if you went to court, what it would actually be like, or even before you went to court, um, if, you had, uh, uh, if you're during, during your negotiation and so forth, and who takes the blame who's actually at fault and so forth. That's the idea of it. So yeah, so I had that camera set up uh, and then you'll notice around 30 minutes in, uh, once we start going, uh, I then go and grab this camera here and I start, you'll see me a couple of times, running back and forth um, and, and yeah, going and, and trying to get the other, the other person uh, uh, that, that's talking. So you've got, so you've got the, um, the guys up on stage talking, doing the, the ones, the excavator, uh, one's the, um, uh, the locator, one's the uh, communication company, one's uh, the directional driller. You, anyway, you, you'll see it when you watch it, uh, the different guys, but all of us in the audience, well not me because I was videoing, but all the guys in the audience were able to ask questions. They were, um, yeah, asking any question they wanted of the person uh, that, yeah, that did this supposed job. Uh, so that's why I thought I'd try to film, rather than having a fixed camera, which it was most for the first 30 minutes, having a fixed camera, fixed at just the guy talking and hearing these guys in background um, ask questions, I try to film both sides. So the editing is really bad in this video compared to my other videos. Uh, the audio is really bad. For the first seven minutes or so, the audio is terrible uh, because uh, yeah, we're, we're literally using the, ca the audio from the camera that's set up way back. Yeah, it's, again, I apologize. If I knew at the time, I would have done differently. We would have had, uh, I mean, I've, I've got a, a, a microphone on me right now. Um, I've got other microphones that I would have used back then. I've got, we would have used a lapel mics. Anyway, um, but anyway, after seven minutes or so, we then grabbed, um, when we realized, because a few people complained, they couldn't hear what the guys were saying. So we grabbed microphones and a few people grabbed microphones. Again, they should have, in hindsight, we should have really made sure we gave, anyway, you'll see. <laughs> so I just want to give a bit of a background that apologies, 
Uh, this is a long video, so there's no breaks. I've videoed the whole thing um, and it goes the whole, the whole way through. So you see the whole thing, but it goes for over 90 minutes. So it's a long, long video. Um, so not the sort of one, I mean, yes, you can sit there and, and try and watch it uh, like you are right now, or it's sort of that maybe you, you can put down, put on in the background or, or have playing in the car while you're driving. Just don't watch the screen, obviously, when you're driving. Um, but yeah, so again, for those of you that are in the locating industry, I suggest you watch it. I, it. It is from 2018, but it's still good. It still gives you a good indication so that, you know, if you ever, if unfortunately, if you ever do end up in court or if anything ever does go wrong, uh, which regardless of how many years you've been in the locating, and regardless how good a locator you are, we all do get these situations that come up from time to time. So it is good to get your mind around what sort of things can happen and what, and different sides of the argument and so forth. So I think it worked all right. Um, as I said, as long as you, you just keep in mind that the audio is bad, the quality is bad, uh, but you get the bigger picture be, uh, behind it all. So I hope that all makes sense. This, is, this video here has gone longer than it should have. Let's try the idea was to give you a bit of an introduction. Anyway, jump in, watch the video, and uh, yeah, hope you enjoy it. Take care guys. If you got any comments, leave them below. I'll try my best to answer it. As I said, this was in 2018, it's been, but yeah, anyway, take care, enjoy. Bye-bye. All right, good morning everybody. Um, I'm gonna show you a mock trial of a damage case. Just so everybody knows up front, this isn't a real case, okay? This, the names have been changed to protect the innocent, the guilty. Uh, there, there's one name you'll hear, it's Telstra, Telstra. This is, like I said, this isn't one of their cases, but they're there because we know Telstra. It's just the telecommunications. Yes, we could have changed. In the States, we changed the names as well. So we, we've done this in the States for about 11 years. Um, so if you've seen it in the States, um, you'll know a little bit about what to expect. But we want to have fun with it. We want to show you what happens if you are... Uh, ever put in this situation. Has anybody been involved in, in litigation? Awesome. May or may not. Anybody, anybody may or may not. Okay, well, good. Well, these are painful deals. <laughs> there's, there's nothing pleasant about being, uh, being in litigation. So we hope you never get in this position. So uh, with me today, and I'm Ron Peterson. I, I'm uh, Ian's counterpart in, in the U.S. with U.S. Nolka. Um, I do that and I also do damage prevention training and unfortunately I've done hundreds of expert witness cases where things went wrong and it is never fun. So um, with us today is Mike Smith and Atwood Marshall. Atwood Marshall. With Atwood Marshall. And I'm going to mess up Chelsea's name. Chelsea Gerbchik. 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 All right. Also from Atwood Marshall. They have uh, volunteered to be our attorneys, our lawyers for the day. Uh, in fairness to them, they've had about three days to uh, see what we're trying to do. So we're winging it a little bit, but we think we have a good case with you. So for you. We'd also like to uh, acknowledge and accept our help for we need New South Wales uh, sponsorship to make this happen. Thanks a lot, Dustin. Again, we are recording this. Um, one thing you need to know about this trial, there's not a judge that's going to decide this trial. You were the judge. You were the jury. Oh. Yeah, here we go. The other piece of this is you will be allowed at times to ask the witness questions. The attorneys may ask you questions. So we want you involved in this thing. So enjoy it, have fun, and remember you get to decide. As, as our past president, one of our past presidents in the U.S. said, you will be the deciders. So good luck. So with that, I will turn it over to Chelsea. We are recording this. Um, and again, remember that this thing isn't real, so it's all made up. <laughs> okay, so I'll be representing the plaintiff, which is uh, Telstra, a communications owner. Um, however, I have some that provide with a bit of a brief on this scenario. So some of these items that we'll be discussing today are not contentious. Um, however, there are a few live issues which will flesh out and hopefully create a discussion in the crowd, seeing you guys aren't shy in the previous seminars. So, um, without further ado, so we've got Telstra, telecommunications owner, we've got Steel Storage as a project owner, ABC Locations as a locating company, directional drilling as a subcontractor for Telstra. So Telstra is claiming the loss and damage in the amount of $40,000 as a result of steel storage, the project owner cutting through and damaging the communications conduit on site. So by way of background, 
My slides aren't in order, so you'll have to bear with me. So I went back around to on or about the 26th of June 2015, the defendant, Steel Storage, engaged ABC locators to assess and detect the underground cable and pipe locations at the premises. So I've got an overview of the premises. <laughs> yeah. Upon evaluating the underground cable system, ABC Locators provided a report to the defendant, Steel Storage, which identified a height issue with a conduit containing optic fiber. I do apologize here. So, on or about the 30th of September 2015, the plaintiff, Telstra, arranged for a contractor to lower the 200 millimeter conduits. The conduits were lowered and the plaintiff received a ball log demonstrating that the 200 conduits had been lowered. Ball log is here. So the red light is the lowering. Um, <coughs> roughly one week later, on or about 7 October 2015, the defendant, Steel Storage, contacted ABC locators to relocate the utilities prior to the excavation of the retaining wall. So, upon reliance of the original markings made back in June, ABC locators failed to conduct further required assessment on the cable and pipe locations at the premises. ABC locators reported to the defendant, Steel Storage, that the marks were still present and no further assessment of the underground communications <coughs> were required. On about 9 October, the driveway was installed. On about 12 October, uh, while excavating for the retaining wall, the defendant, Steel Storage, struck and cut through the, com uh, the communications conduit. So, obviously, uh, cables claimed by the plaintiff to be its property were damaged by the defendant, Steel Storage. The defendant, Steel Storage, failed and failed and or refused to obtain the current and accurate details of the location of the cable. In other words, relied on those original markings made three months prior on or about 26 June 2015. The damage letter received from Telstra to steel storage. So nobody's ever received anything like that? No. So that's the background. Any questions before we get on with the submissions? <coughs> Play story? I'm going to ask questions during the witnessing stage, so make sure you understand. No, yeah. All right. So, yeah. I'll just rehash it. So, um, steel storage um, uh, engaged ABC locator uh, to come out and check the property. Um, it was found that we needed to lower the box on the driveway. Can you speak up? Yeah, speak up a little bit. Sorry. Can you speak up a little bit? Steel storage engaged ABC locator to come to the property to check the utilities on it. It was found that as part of the driveway, that box needed to be lowered. So they uh, <coughs> asked to do that. Telstra got one of their contractors. The directional. Directional digging to come and um, lower the box on the property. Um, after that, as part of that, if we go back to the slides, they lowered the box. but. During lowering the box, they also had to move some of the cables. Now, the issues that come about is that there wasn't any communication in respect of the moving of the cables. So later on, when steel storage had ABC locators come back on the property um, because they were doing the retaining wall, um, they saw the markings on the ground. And because the markings on the ground were still there, they assumed that they were proper. Okay, this was two weeks later. Um, and when they dug, they hit the cables, and that was the issues. So, in general, I'm acting for steel storage here. Uh, the submissions are that obviously they're going to be looking at ABC locators and they didn't do their job properly. Uh, that's, that's, what, that's what they'll be claiming in that they relied upon their previous week's work and not the actual current um, work that was done. Two weeks after the fact, before they did. That's um, not the, the other issues with directional diggers and Tuster engaging them as an independent contract is that um, what occurred was directional diggers didn't provide on their bore readings, the bore you know, diagram up there, the movement of the cable. And I'm not sure whether or not it's industry practice that that's the case. Or, or what's required in normal practice. But in, in a legal sense, 
they would be obligated to tell Telstra or the telecommunications person that they moved the cable. And then that information should have been passed along to the other other parties. And obviously, that didn't happen in this case. So um, this is done in prevention of efforts. Um, obviously, the prevention is better than, you know, than the cure. So you, you want to be able to nip these things in the bud uh, in the first instance. So we'll continue with the submissions on behalf of the plaintiff. So the issues for determination is whether or not the defendant is liable wholly or in part for the negligence of the two other parties. And there's also going to be a discussion as to whether or not the plaintiff is at fault. I'm sure we'll have a few discussions on that. So firstly, did the defendant owe a duty of care to forbear damaging the plaintiff's property? Has the defendant breached a duty of care owed to the plaintiff by failing to do the following? One, inform ABC locators prior to its second visit that Telstra had arranged for a contractor to lower the communication duet, uh, conduit sorry, one week earlier. Secondly, carry out inspections more rigorously prior to excavating for the retaining wall and in doing so, failing and or refusing to locate the cable and failing and or refusing to avoid damaging the cable. The plaintiff submits that the answer to each of the above is yes, for reasons which are now set out. Um, does the duty of care exist between the plaintiff and the defendant? Seems to be clearly established based on the evidence that the defendant owed a duty of care to forbear the damaging of Telstra's cabling by digging anywhere that it was reasonably foreseeable that the cabling might be encountered. Has the defendant breached a duty of care? The defendant was aware of ABC locators' markings and the period of time that had lapsed roughly three months since the locators' initial visit in June. The defendant breached its duty the minute it cut through the cable, having taken less than reasonable care to avoid the damage to the plaintiff's property. Reasonable, reasonable care would have involved at least obtaining or reviewing current plans prior to excavating for the retaining wall. Reasonable care would have also included Damaging, uh, sorry, communicating and informing other parties of the work undertaken on about 30th of September 2015, which is the lowering of the conduit. So remembering that Steel Storage engaged Telstra to have a contractor lower the 200 millimetre conduits on the 30th of September. Um, ABC also told Steel Storage that the marks were still present and no further tests were required. So further, reasonable care um, would have included performing work with extreme care, maintaining a minimum clearance between the construction activity and the location where it could have been reasonably assumed that a communication line would reside, which I learned on Tuesday is roughly one metre. Right? <laughs> um, so further in relation to directional drilling, it is our submission that my client Telstra engage directional drilling as an independent contractor to lower the cable as requested. It's our understanding that this would have been done in a workmanlike manner. So the usual test applied here is whether a defendant failed to do what a reasonable person would have done in the circumstances, specifically a task that involves a special set of skills. Um, Telstra and my client completely relied on directional drilling, and it is because of this that in the event my client Telstra is found at all liable, then it is only fair that as to the law, that directional drill will be accountable in a contributory sense. Um, it's not up to my client to decide what proportion either directional drilling or any other parties owe. So, in conclusion, the plaintiff submits, uh, submits that based on the evidence and the arguments herein, the defendant is liable, still storage. In the alternative, we invite you to provide a defence in respect of why this may not be the case. But as it seems to my client, it could be. Um, a matter of concern of proportionate liability, which we'll discuss in a second, and our client has no submissions on how the proportion should be set up. So over to the defence. Right, any questions? questions? Yeah, I'm going to just a statement first before you go on. The damage was caused by an excavation company, not directional. Not directional. Not directional. Yeah, not no. directional. That's right. So that's probably why it's a little bit confusing. So directional drills are what you call Telstra. The damage happened by an excavating company. Has um, the client still storage already paid Telstra to relocate that asset so it wasn't in conflict with his proposal? That's correct. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. So, is it that objective achieved? Sorry. 
Is it a drawback? Yeah, 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 yeah. It's a whole, it's a whole, it's a whole building. But at initial discussion, before they could do anything, they did put the driveway and was found that Telstra was too high, so it had to be lowered to right. keep on going. Yeah, but the damage was caused by the same yeah. driveway. That's correct. Nothing right. to do with the driveway. The driveway was put in everything this week. Right. It's the next day. Right. So, so. They lowered it and moved the cable. Well, they they identified the devil with the box, so they did nothing to cover the cable. Um, I'm a little bit difficult understanding with the pictures. Um, is did they install new conduits or did they lower them? Because I don't understand how the potholes could still be there if the cable was lowered. They were the existing potholes for the existing cables. I know, but how do you lower it with keeping a pothole in? Because you have to excavate no, down. You that's the exi- That's what you just said. If you're listening, they said this was the existing information that they've gone for. The conduits were lowered when they come back. Go like that. Mm-hmm. Or incorrect locating may or may not have occurred. That was the existing photo shot before the driveway. Well, by the way, there's the proof that the job was done in the first place. Mm-hmm. And, and some of the questions. My question is how, how did the locator say, that, were the potholes there or not the second time they came? That's you'll get, you'll get a chance to ask <laughs> that when it's done. <laughs> <laughs> That's the whole issue. Yes. Yeah, we'll <laughs> Um, from the original locate for the dog pointing information still in date to the next free site revisit? Yeah. Yeah. We believe we believe will come later and possibly or probably not. <laughs> yes, these, these are hopefully the questions when we get to the witnesses and we'll, we'll have you ask. Are there any other questions? Yeah. Are there any other questions related to the process and and so the sales and setting the scenario? Yeah, and setting the scenario. Does everyone understand the scenario? Can I just clarify? I've got the photos of the lines going that way. Is the driveway put this way? In fact, the driveway was put in between those two marks. The driveway went in, the driveway was fine. The locate is done fine. In fact, after this happened, Damage happened. Yeah, that's what that's what I do. Where's the driver going that way? Yes. Or does it go that way? Yes. Okay. Okay. So this is for the retaining of the whole park. Yeah. So what's happened? The driver's already installed the car. Yeah. 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 Yeah
Any questions? Okay, now any questions related to what he's trying to do, not the facts that he laid out? Because you're going to get the chance to ask the actual witnesses that and hear their questions. So with respect to what he's trying to do with this statement, is everybody pretty clear? Sorry. So basically he's, saying, he's trying to say that his client is only proportionally to blame. He's putting it more into the locator. I, I, would, I would say he's saying his client is not, but in the in the fact if they are found proportionate, then he's kind of laying it out. My submission would be my client's obviously guilty of any of these issues, and that if there was any blame, it should fall on the other parties. Was the retaining and, he, and, he, and he's suggesting or submitting that those parties are obviously ABC locators and Telstra and their subcontractors. That would be a question for your witnesses to ask. He's, again, he's just laying out his case. If, if you would for me, Mike, would you... We're making this very, very simple because we have two hours to do this. I, I can tell you right now, we just settled a case in the States that went on for nine years. So these things go crazy long and they can go for months at a time. So we're condensing this. But if you could, Mike, could you just briefly explain if you were representing steel storage, where you would go with, with bringing other people into the suit? Well, steel storage has been brought in the matter because obviously Telstra's suing them for hitting the cables. So uh, we would add on, obviously, uh, ABC locators to the, point, to the party. Um, I would imagine if, if we can find against Telstra, um, in respect of whatever loss would occur because of the delay in the project, Telstra would add on um, the diggers who um, didn't provide them with the information. Direct on the diggers and ask, get that request for some type of, some type of um, contribution from them. So technically that's, that's what you would do. Uh, you would shift it away from you and put the blame on the others. And, and we've left our excavator that ultimately hit this line, which is uh, dirty, diggers. dirty diggers. We've left them completely out of the fold because had they been brought in, then there would be questions about mm -hmm. do they do their job before they dig and their due diligence throughout the process. But we have to keep this thing reasonably tight. So I just wanted you to hear how it's not just an A, B, to A to B conversation, it gets A to B and then B goes here and there, and by the time you've got it, you've got a lot of parties locked into these things. But yeah, but like if we're talking about prevention, dirty diggers is definitely one that needs to be held accountable. Because obviously, they can send out to do the job, they're the only ones who know where it was lowered to, Direct what's in the That's right, Direct 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 sorry, that's right. They're too close in name, aren't they? Yeah. <laughs> um, the original task, as I understand, is um, you asked for the Telstra to be shifted out of your no. kind of work zone. Blow it. Blow it. Yeah. Blow it. Blow so it. you uh, asked for it to be Blow it. shifted. Now, this subsequent work, is this outside, is, is it behind the boundary or in front of the boundary? Within the property. Because if it's a retaining wall, and then, you know, I'm just sort of curious as to the right. So the retaining wall is going on the property boundary, and it kind of was damaged inside the property boundary. So it's now, the so now shifted, a little bit lower it, but shifted it into the boundary where the whole objective was to lower it only. Lower it, but but kind of get it out of the way. Correct. But they can't put it in the in the way. And nobody knows. The poor logs man. So just, yeah, just a legal question here. Um, given that the conduits were lowered, um, so these are new conduits, is this yes. P100? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so uh, presumably the old conduit would have been covered by the grandfathering provisions of the Telecommunications Act. Um, the new conduit wouldn't be, given that it's on private property. They sort of get appropriate permissions and they're do they not they to get tenure yeah. and do all the things they're supposed to do. Um, the Telecommunications Act. Uh, Dominic, can you explain the um, grandfather clause? Well, June of 1997 is the magic date. Um, anything that was in the ground was in June of 1997, which is pretty well all of Telstra's major conduit, um, has automatic right of way under the Telecommunications Act. But that doesn't apply to any of the ground after June of 1997, which is a little bit more complicated objection to get permissions and uh, tenure. Uh, only because it's an area that the original conduits went in about 15 years ago. 
was out in 2000. No, the new commute went in two years ago. So, so the 1997 really doesn't come into this discussion. Because it was after 1997, it's not it's not grandfathered. That's correct. So there may be a technical issue there. Correct. Which may be a lawyer, a lawyer to talk through. And it may be a really great question for a witness coming up. <laughs> <laughs> But so single mode of the fibre is where the damage was. Uh, these are the existing conduits, and as you can see by the pile, they're in the shared trench. Uh, the back of the bill, the back of the bill, and the electrical doesn't matter what it was because it's not involved in this. The electric was low enough at the time of the bill. Um, there's history of the following data. Uh, we have a mud map of where the conduits were found, where the driveway went in, where the other conduits are, everything else that was in the area, another electrical line going into the property, blah, blah, blah. So before the driveway went in, everything was perfect, quality A information and quality B locating, and another quality C plan. But that's where everything was done perfectly. Where was the damage in relation to that? The damage in relation to that was right there. So, so the boundaries. Not the, the original job was locating everything, but we need to pot all it. So we need electronic trace all the way along the job. Okay. The guys on the mud maps only mud map pot so they mud map locate. But we had to prove that the convicts were long enough to put the driveway in, so the client said, let's pot all to make sure, hang on, it's a conflict, we need to put the driveway in. Tomorrow is where we talk about what happened. So it's everything up to date, it's perfect. Now it starts getting a little bit smoky. These plans go to the conduits on the outside of the property. If you're putting a retaining wall in on your property and you hit some conduits, how did they get into the property? I'm still not clear on that because you're saying you're just lowering the conduit. No, no, no. The scope was lowering the conduit. Yeah. What's this directional drill got to do with it? They have to, they have to get the directional drilling to lower well, the conduit. How do you get the existing optics in that drill? Oh, that's so impossible. They, 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 they have to put new installation, they can sort of new conduits and then pull the new fibre through. Yeah, but new they, fibre? They, no existing pipe. But they didn't have lower the existing pipe in there. How do you lower pipe? You dig next to it with a trench and lower it. This, in this instance, Telstra decided it was cheaper to directional drill. Telstra decided. Telstra really yeah. needs to lower. To lower, not to install new. It's still in the ground. It's Telstra. You can come back. Put a pipe in. I think the main information though is that Telstra can do whatever they want to their asset. If they decide it's cheaper to install new because the other stuff was pretty shitty and squashed or whatever, and they said it was too far damaged, we can't reuse these conduits. They're not long enough to push down because you're not supposed to do that unless you're a Telstra contractor. In Telstra's decision, they said it's cheaper, easier, quicker for us to put in new stuff. That would be information more than around. It was. Was that all? Did you listen to the brief? You what just said you lowered it then, because like, I've been doing lowering heaps. Tell the truth to what they're going to do with their utilities. The first one is lowering. Tell us to come back to it. Here's our bill. We've done it. Okay. Directional drill. Yeah. 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 My understanding is she was around the lowering. No, no. The issue is around that the, no, no. the, the, the information wasn't passed on. Right. Okay, so the plans were not. So, so you know, this is all hypothetical. Yeah, yeah. some Jeffrey Robinson. This is, but it's no longer. That's it. In your scenario, the time lapse doesn't seem relevant, like a three month period. Only if the plans may have been out of date. And it been, so the question I mean, I suppose, is updated, but you're saying it never occurred on that day. So, wait till we just get up there. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Okay, why don't we. He's going to take a break and then we'll come back and no, 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 no. Okay, last question. Can you tell us about the process? Okay, last question's about process, not about what may or may not have happened. Okay, let's go. So, so, all the witnesses. So, Telstra, um, which is represented by the switch, I'll call the first witness in our process. So, who's actually the steel storage? Who is steel storage today? 
So now is your opportunity to ask our witness questions on the process. Who is first? Yeah. When you asked for the second locator to come to site, did you make him aware of the um, lowering of the... Um, he, was, he was aware of it because he initially came and identified the conduits were too shallow to be able to put the new crossover in. Yeah. And so they needed to be lowered, something needed to be done so we could build a crossover. So he was aware of what was happening because he identified the issue. So was that passed on to the locator when he came back the second time? That things had changed since his last visit? Yeah. So he knew things had changed? <laughs> yeah. Excuse me. Did the alignment of the service or the asset, did the alignment change? It did, and that's, that is my issue, is that Telstra installed their ducts onto my property. Did the uh, locator, when he came back the second time, uh, cite the wall logs? Uh, he, he had access to all that information. In the back. Uh, from the first visit, did you supply dock cleaning, or did the ABC locator supply themselves? Uh, we supplied the dock. And on the we second did. time? The second time, day. the second time we supplied dog for you. And actually, they date their drawings? Were they in date? Did they? Were they? The oh, second visit, then dog for you. Where were they? It's on the job site. Yeah, I think that kind of. That's kind of a crucial question whether the plans were in date. Oh, well, we would have expected the cable located to. Check that? To check that? Yeah, I can. Just to you. Were you present when the second locate was done? I was there when he came to site. But on the second visit? On the second visit, yeah. yeah. I don't know what he did, he went and he mucked around out there. And... <laughs> so you, you, you weren't. <laughs> but he told you everything was okay. Yeah. And he said, oh, everything's fine. And he said, the blower. We said, well, we know it's going to be dry. And so, yeah, it must be better. Did you didn't ask any questions as to why there weren't any more marks there? Were there remaining all the time? No, no. Just assumed it marked it all up like that and everything was fine. At that stage, I didn't know that the, 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 the toll street installed their ducts on my property. Mm -hmm. So, Josh, did right. they send you a land access notice saying that they were going to install conduits on the property? No, but that that all, we, we, we contacted Telstra and said, your, your conduits are too high and we can't build the driveway. We need to get off, we need to build a driveway to access the site. We said we need something done. And they sent us a bill to lower it and we made the bill. The conduits were damaged they the new installments? Yes. Yes. Yep. So the old ones that were were they were outside of your yeah, property. They were they were they, they were all damaged. They, they were outside of your property yeah. 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 Initially they were outside of the property boundary. We it was bottled against we could see it was outside of the property boundary. Did you know the new ones were inside your property boundary? No. They did. How would I know? We, I, was a, I, I wouldn't expect Telstra to, to put their assets on my property. <coughs> was the property boundary actually marked out before the drill? Yeah, it was actually um, testing fencing up there to, to um, make the site secure. You said it was the same company, but was it the same locator that came out? And you see it like it. Yeah, so it was right. same, so it was actually, so same locator came and located yeah. both times. Yeah. This is where the damage occurred. You can see the retaining wall coming up right here. So again, just, there was a photo of the boundary bags that were in from survey forever. Yes, it was clearly marked as a boundary. Another question. Um, if, if they, um, I noticed the spray paint marks, it was just short bits of that, and it was pothole just near the driveway, obviously, for the purpose of the driveway, and the damage happened further away from that. About two metres away from these ones. Those marks. So yeah. it happened about here. Yeah. So if so you have a look at the water main there, there was a firebox and then the damage happened. Obviously those marks are the they old ones. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Right. That's why I understand. Do you reason why that was the clock holes where you're going to excavate? Because it was being, there. It was they were electronically traced and they were outside the property. Yeah, they were. It was all electronically located. And Telstra had to 
put new dates from pit to pit so they can put new cable in and rejoin or whatever they've got to do. Sorry, I can't go on the other side, but I don't know we still established it. So on the second visit, were the dog for each dig drawings in date? Uh, I, 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 still, I still had the drawings, I had the previous one, I gave them the locator to the locator. We're now in court, tell Stuart we investigated, we know that the drawings are in date and we're out there at that time. Yeah, we not well, yeah, yeah, those are no, I would have expected the case located, so yeah. you know what the requirement is there. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not asking like that, I'm just saying something. Yeah. Yeah. It comes to investigate, obviously, and this is in court now. With the decent date. With the decent date. Yes or no? Sorry. Tell Stuart to answer that. No, <laughs> that would be information that would be made. That's probably not a question for about steel storage and any sort of plans. Steve's name was his job site, he had a boundary fence around it, he had his, his parcel of land, but the job site comes down and he creates a safety fence one metre off the property, and he was in the that was his job site and didn't require So, did you see the plans? I, I, I saw the plans, but initially the, the Telstra plans for when he came to. Cause we, so, did you see any plans after the driveway was installed? And were the new plans produced to reflect? No, you don't want to what you're asking. I know what I'm asking. <laughs> <laughs> we know that we engaged. We had the same plans, um, and there were some ball logs that were produced by the directional drawers, which indicated that um, that that been lowered and run with the alignment would show that it was should have been outside in the on, in the road reserve not in the property. What's normal practice in relation to that's what you expect to receive the second set of drawings showing where it's been changed? Definitely if anything well, has been changed? Well, we received all the logs, but I thought that was probably sufficient information for us to know yeah. that the, the cables were outside of that property. Yep. Did, did the, uh, the second locator who came out, or the same locator that came out, did he actually uh, respray the marks on the ground, or were they the same marks that were already there? They looked quite like fresh there. Did he come out and respray them up based off the potholes that were already there? Or, or did you just talk about it? He didn't put any. Uh, I left him to do the job, and he said, no, no, it's all outside the property. It's not inside all the property. I got all the information I had, all of the old plans, whatever he needed, I gave it to him, and he went out and did whatever he did, and he came back, back to him and he said, You're all right, it's all outside the property, you've got nothing to worry about, you've got to retain all that. All right, so are you um, certain that he didn't throw the the second time out? Oh, well, he will be for a couple of hours, I hope he did. <laughs> <laughs> Any more questions? The one with the front. Okay. Um, so, as the PCB, you the the uh, site. Can you explain that how you um, how the operation went and excavation uh, before the strike took place? So, how did you do the excavation? Yeah. So, what, when you've done the excavation, um, what was the procedure? Was it just a diamond digger? Yeah. Yeah. So, and just asking to, to clear it and. Prepare it so we could, we could put his holdings in for the retaining wall. Okay, that's all right. Does, what's the process? Is there no process for a spotter? It was a Well, there was no need for a spotter because there was nothing over here that needed, that needed to be protected. Uh, and we were of, of the understanding <coughs> that um, Tulsa's ducks were in the road reserve where they should be, and not on our property. Right. One more at the back. So you say you did everything you possibly could to get the job right, but yeah. um, the locator must have buggered up the second time you come back because you did not identify where they were. Oh, yeah, yeah, and as a fact that Telstra installed their ducts in, inside our property. Yeah. Going back to one of the core elements of the process, did you follow the duty of care and make sure you had a properly qualified person on the site? Locator, I'm certified, like, couldn't have got before the horse, but yeah, okay. You could ask all the people that. But he's the person engaging that. So he's the person engaging that. We've used him for years, he's always located at Telstra, so I can only assume that if he's located at Telstra, he's allowed to locate at Telstra. I guess the 
که این نیست باید باید که این شده سوال که هم دوی دارم و باید دوی It was identified to be outside of our work area. I was told it was outside our work area, so the death was irrelevant. Then because we were not, we did not, we did not feel that we were going to be working anywhere near them because everything was related. My, my understanding was the new conduits within the road reserve not inside our property. We asked Tyler Tolstrup to lower them, not bring them on our yeah. property. So you, yeah, you paid the. You've paid the shelves to lower and not have a right. Yeah, that's what you were replaced with. Right. It was clear it was a construction spot and the work was being done. There was temporary fencing up here on the site. Yeah, exactly. um, just yeah. one question. The, um, the location of the services for the locator, how far yeah. from yeah. that location were you excavating? Was it two metres? Was it a metre? Oh, probably about a couple of metres away from the building. It was a building. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Was the location below the building outside the building proposed cross over at the above address? Invoice to be made out until Davy Stills already cleared the idea of the preferred time frame cannot be met. Was it the pre-fencing metallic? Sorry? The pre-fencing for the construction site metallic? Yep. Yeah. Was that, um, I, I can't probably ask him that, but just, uh, do we get a chance to ask ABC locators? Yes, you will. Yeah, okay. So, so, so when the directional drill was done, was it not marked on the ground? <laughs> Because it always is. This is what It always is. And any of your other marks were there from three months ago. Why weren't the directional drill marks on the ground all the way through? The other marks weren't there, but the conduits were still visible. What's that? The other marks weren't there, but the conduits were still visible. The all the all the other utilities. So all the plot on the still was still visible. Nothing got changed except that Tosser was asked to be lowered. So so was it when the drilling was done, were you still were you there when the drilling was done? No. No. There's a ball on the says it that's up wrong. That's an angle why we need to shoot the ball on that correct. Okay. Uh, great time is here. We've uh out there, so our locator is going to be next. I was a little worried because it's on the door. He assures me he was only out checking his insurance coverage, so we're good. So are we ready for our looking? Yeah, we're good. All right. Our plaintiff calls the locator. Okay, like I said, in the interest of time, you're going to have about, a, about 10 minutes for each of the remaining witnesses. So we're going to try to fire through um, so that we can have some discussion after the fact that formed it. So. I'll ask a few questions first. Uh, and ABC visited the site prior to 7 October 2015. Hang on. Yeah. Oh, sorry. <laughs> were you aware that the lines marked on the ground were initially drawn by you or a colleague on the initial visit? Well, so is. Can you describe the usual practice on the days the uh, permits going for? So, how many days lapsed between uh, first visit and second visit where you deemed the second analysis was in unnecessary? What in my script? Three months. You're right. You're right. You're so what was the purpose of your revisit? Were you aware that Telstra required the cables to be lowered? Well, that was our initial visit, because we highlighted the fact that the cables would be too low for the appropriate works to be carried out, so we suggested that they be lowered, which uh, the uh, client had requested that we revisit the site to uh, confirm that that had been the case. Uh, prior to your second visit, um, were you provided with any information from Telstra and Well, we had the document being planned, yes. 
so you can go around that front. Um, this is prior to the works. Yes. 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 And after the works? I believe it the plans, yes. So on the day of the second visit, can you describe what occurred? Well, we followed up the marks. We noticed that our existing potholes were still in place. Um, we went through the copper cable and traced it out, and uh, it was all where it was. And given that the works were just the lowering, everything seemed to be right. So we, yeah, we just. So the that. best practice of what is what happened. Okay. Was, when you visit the site the second time, that was the best practice for okay. locating. Yes. It was to follow what was on the ground and not. The going on was true, I guess. The going that's what I did, yes. Any questions? Okay, now we get to have some fun. Right <laughs> away. Um, yeah, just going back to what you said before, she did actually claim onto the cable on the second visit and found the top. Allegedly, yes. Yeah. I can't prepare with it. Got the cable. Great. Was that on both conduits? It was fiber in the second, and this was the one that was brought to the attention that it was going to be too low. Yep. Hence the fact that the works were to take place. Did you rob the fiber conduit? Second time? No. <laughs> no, I didn't. So you did actually confirm that? Well, I did copper had been changed, like the scope of the works. You know, so why? So you did confirm, as you said you did, but you did say you confirmed the location. Of the copper, yeah. Of the copper. Well, they're running together, mate. Yeah. Right. Okay. Yeah, where are we go. That's best practice, correct? Oh, yeah. Are you going to certify like that? What's the view? <laughs> <laughs> No. No. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. What well, like I said, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Not no, I'm not certified. No, no. no. Yeah, go right in. On the, um, were you, no, um, given the direction of bore logs, the, that they had shifted the, the plan of the bore logs when you were back on site? Yeah, well, it's just been lower, you know? But the actual plans are you physically given the plans that they the ball plans look behind you. You're on the dashboard of the trail. <laughs> oh yeah. Yes, were you <laughs> were you handed then the visual I think so. Yeah, so, sure so being point five off boundary and they're both they are digging on boundary, was it not within your right to pothole being within the meter required of telescopes? What do you want to put all of the plugs? The coppers are in, you know, they're just run, they're run both. So, you know, they're lower both. So, where's the problem? <laughs> well, they're identifying that the, the, even though they're inside the property, they're identifying that it's half a metre off boundary, which is still within the scope that you'd have to put all and physically find it. Yeah, and like I said, I traced the copper and it was in the same line that it's been rejected and proved it the first time. The works had taken place and it had been lovely. So, you know, yeah, and that. <laughs> uh, would not just the existence of the bore log kind of come to like a realization, like maybe they hadn't just lowered the pods, they'd actually bored something? Well, like, I assume they did, yeah. You know? Yeah, so they've they realigned it and like all the they're not going to be able to get the because it was poor, right? So, <laughs> yeah. Why, why were they poor in the exact same position at the bottles? <laughs> 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 Is it safe to assume that the ball log is accurate? 
Isn't the ball lock in the ball lock? Well, well, when they submit it, what you reckon they give us? You think they give us erroneous information? I've seen that earlier. Wouldn't you assume the ball lock to be out? So who who validated the ball logs and the fact that all that information was at all accurate? What do you say? <laughs> but the Borlocks, who's certified the accuracy of the Borlocks? Who's certified? Telstra. Telstra supplied it. Yeah, they yeah. supplied it. Who certified it? Telstra. No, who certified it? Not who supplied it. Who ever certified the Borlocks? <laughs> there is there any there certification of Borlocks? Most of them in the direction of the audience. That one happens when that's constructed in the direction of the rules supplied by Telstra. Why is it not right? How many conduits were you aware of when you went back the second time? Two, yeah. Two, and how many? Two when we started, two when we come back. And how many coppers are running through the, the conduits? Did you exactly the same deal, yeah. and that's what I'm saying. It, it's all it done is lower it. So we only took the liberty of locating the copper because it was going to be a bit cheaper, quicker, and you know, save a few bucks. And they're going to, you know. Relocate one, they're going to relocate both, aren't they? Yeah, so how many coppers did you carry this one copper line? <laughs> oh, so I had a two 100 mm cop tubes with the plug in the swing two different people on. Yeah. Were they the same con, do you believe? Or? Follow the dancing ball. Why did you put it in my life? Oh, I'm saying it's AB con, Jim. Quite frankly. Yeah. So is it possible that the second conduit just had the fibre in it and you didn't, didn't rob that? Could have thought so. Based on what happened though. Based on what happened though. It's, it's like... Yeah. You, so, um, on the first visit, you made a site record to get the fire. Did you make a site record on the second visit? No, I didn't. Is it your normal practice to make a site record? My scripted response is no. <laughs> so you can pretty much establish that you've taken a log record of, as good information and, and then advice for the client out of the way. Well, without we we can, we without confirm that, it. We confirmed that the copper was had been loved. Yes. So you just, you know. You'd assume that they'd do it both together, wouldn't you? Why would you dig two different holes? Was, was there any contact with uh, Melbourne before you did for the second uh, excavation? I believe there was. Yes. <laughs> yeah. So, as you can see on the plan here, nothing sort of denoted that it's yeah, you know, changed or there's no you know, change. Of, Building line or anything like that, and uh, yeah, so you know it all just seems the same. It's according to the plan, and again, like I said, we verified the copper, and it was where, and we also could verify that it had been changed in depth, that it had a better cover on it now, suitable cover, and uh, yeah, so that's where we're at. So clearly, it's not best practice. Which is Sorry. <laughs> that, that's becoming totally <laughs> <laughs> what, what could have could have occurred differently to prevent what occurred? Yeah, that would help. Probably uh like hindsight, I probably should have rotted the the fire. Yeah. Right here. Blind to a certified light cutter. <laughs> <laughs> I find it helps me mind my own business. <laughs> 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 Yeah. No. Yeah. <laughs> 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 
things up. Yes. Was, it, was there any change on the first lot of Delta plans to the second lot of Delta plans? No. 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 Was there a second lot of Delta plans? Yeah, yeah, there was, but they hadn't changed. There was no, you know, <laughs> indication that the concept would be any different from what's denoted on the plan. And we're not aware of the copper. They're shown side by side there, aren't they? Correct. Yeah. Mm. So Absolutely. Do I use the the second part of the topic of claims from Dallas. Yes, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. One last question? Please. <laughs> <laughs> You're saying that you hooked onto the copper cable. Um, why, how far did you go from the pit to not know that they were to veering off towards the property? The wall would have been done together. The copper went straight through like it was the time before, only so, deeper, yeah. which we were able to verify by our calibrated locator. How did they lower the cable conduits that were at a height that were in the road of the driveway? Well, like sorry, Dave, sorry, no, I was saying it. <laughs> Not here, I should say. The first application <laughs> of the job was to lower the Telstra network because yep. it was in the road. So right. to lower that Telstra network, you would have had to lower both the conduits, that, copper that and was my assumption, yeah. And so, I verified that one had been delivered, so I assumed that both had been done. So only one, only the five got aboard, or both conduits got four? Oh, Telstra. Well, I'm, yeah, under the impression yeah, that the Telstra, the uh, five was aboard. But the copper cable was just lowered down to a height. All log says two by 100 or PVZ. That's what I mean, the, the, the copper got re drilled in the. Drill. Two by 100. I can't see that for you. Okay, so so the copper should have, if you hooked onto the copper, it should have went over into the boundary. There's two by 100 drilled, and that's the four. Was there an extra conduit? No, two. No, I was aware of it. I didn't see it. It's time of mine, is it? Yes. How did you know you made this one? It's probably a light coat if you have those two. It's nice. In your opinion, the information provided to the uh, excavator operator or the steel company, did you give them, in your opinion, correct advice? Well, we, we, the, the uh, conduits were still in the ground, the, the ground okay. the markings have gone because they've so all gone. The but there was, there's a mud map supplied, yeah, that's uh, exhibit. <laughs> exhibit. <laughs> well, that was before. Look, <laughs> did you fail your um, field assessment? <laughs> I've still got the one question on the ball. Well, I've done the direction of drilling and stuff, so if, if we were to do a ball like that, both <coughs> conduits would be pulled back together in the one ball. So that copper would be following that fibre and the, even though not the con same conduit, they'd be in the same bore direct in the same bore hole, the twin conduits. But just pull that here's together. a hypothetical for you, they may have because the, the optic was the, the the cause for concern, they couldn't lower that. They may have lowered the um, the copper and left that in existing and when they pulled back they might have put an extra conduit in for future work. <laughs> So then there would have been three, three, <laughs> then there would have been three, or, or you could totally disregard that last comment. What if they had the second bore? Because when they pulled back the bore right, so they had to put a second bore in. <coughs> and they didn't tell Telstra. They put a second bore in. So they had to do a second bore because when they pulled the conduit back, they couldn't pull it back. Okay, well that might have been different. Hey, I'm assuming. Like you are, like yeah. ideas, ideas, ideas. So, 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 yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, if you were my client, would you would you rely upon your advice? <coughs> if I am still looking.
Contact with um, ABC locators or steel storage in relation to um, what you did? No. And you provided a report back to Telstra? Yep. yep. Exactly. Okay. Go ahead. Can you clarify your scope? <clears throat> um, and did you perform to your scope? The scope was to, to a lot of the hundreds. Um, and get so did they give you a design line or any other no. criteria? No. Short so, so there was a, a run. gap in that. Yeah, it's a short run. I wanted to get the driveway in and we just needed to drop it um, much later. Did you engage a locator yourself to go out there and <coughs> did you have somebody tracking your head while you were drilling? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. How long have you been drilling for? Uh, just turning 20. Yes. Either you're only locate? Uh, yeah, sometimes. Like, so we do it on this one. Marks are still on site. So, um, what we've said at ABC locates, mm -hmm. they've been on site, so we can give them a report from them. No, no, we've got this marked on site. So you didn't get a locator in at all? No, they're marked. We can't even mark what they're located. So you're located, yeah, you like out of their mark. That's right, yeah. So, yeah, we can see that there's an electric one side, so you can stay away from that. Did the Ulster inspect your work once it was finished? Um, I can tell you, actually. They were on site when we were there. Did they sign anything to say that it had been completed properly? Uh, they paid our bill. <laughs> What's not in practice, and they usually come on site and check it? Uh, I'm, I'm sure they check it, but they're a lot here. I'm sure they check it. Is it common practice for you to track the front of your drill? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. 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 Did you know it went into the property? No, I didn't. Actually, as far as we can tell, it just went straight. Um, there wasn't a big um, distance between the electrical and the boundary, so it would be covered by that. But everything would be pretty straight on that. <coughs> How long have you been working for Telstra? Gage. Two years. Ten years. Ten years. How many shots did you do all the day? Did one initially, and then we had to do a certain. Okay. Did you track the second one? Well, I have to check. It's been a while. It's a couple of years ago. I'm sure we could have done. If you were tracking it, you would have known what was going over to the property. Yeah, there's, there's the electrical there that was going to be compacted, but um, it's as far as we know. Where's the ball off for the second drill? Good question. <laughs> 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 
but it should be in Telstra. Um, was there a second report on done to submit it? I'm sure there would be. Sure, or was there? I'm sure. Is it a requirement? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Would it have been provided to other parties as well as Telstra? Uh, we're working with Telstra, but it wasn't provided to the CS storage or ABC. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. As you were tracking the ball log, your employees, did they report any trouble or did they lose sight of the head? Did they respond back with uh, <coughs> things when, you know, we lost sight of a bit and, and so we just sort of had to fudge the figures? Was there was, was it, uh, any sight issues out there? Uh, there was a bit of rock, which goes through the great, but um, it wasn't that did you calibrate your equipment and do interference checks before you started your war? I'm sure we've done that. What we do every day? Yeah. What sort of um, training have you got in place for your bikes that track the heads? Uh, we do a lot of on job training generally. Experience stuff. How long have you got? Look. <coughs> Who's the person in your company with the most experience that trains these guys? So I'm the guy who's been doing for 20 plus years and he's the trainer. Right. In the back. Okay. Can you produce any records for your training and for your calibrations? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's work with the telescope and provide all that. So, as far as I know, we're taking all their boxes. We're still working on them today. In retrospect, how do you explain that you went up the line? Well, so there's a bit of rock. Um, that, yeah, we could have bypassed it. We were worried about the electrical, so we just did it there and that. And then, yeah, we ended up with rock as well. So when it's finished and you're completed, do we double check that? <coughs> so in retrospect, would you, do you think you should have done that? It's not something we practice to do that. It's not a practice, it's also been announced to do it, so it's worked out to do it. Did you carry a non-touch to that? Yeah, but we're talking about it. Do you remember it was on Monday or Friday? No, it I It's a common practice, you'd never go on a private property doing it. Definitely not. And if you had to, if there's some place with Telstra, you'd have to go through? Uh, if we're entering property, yeah, Telstra. Um, I mean, I wouldn't have to go through Telstra would have to approve it. And that happened to discuss? No, I said we didn't do it all the time. As far as I knew, we were how did it end up with property? That that will be our Elstra with <laughs> But we're playing. <laughs> <laughs> Is that what you want to ask them any questions? Um, so, no, no. straight up for Chelsea. Tell us, did you still engage um, direction on the Yes. Yes, we engaged. Yes. Did you remind the plans? Uh, no. No, we didn't. No. After they came on the property and did the work, we provided us any further information from them. 
So normal practices that they just identify that they don't work by the invoice and say that's checked off. Um, and, and that they completed the scope of work provided. Is it normal practice that they provide a, a, a drawing? I look at the um the digital was identical to yeah. Um questions this is one about ABC locators. So can you confirm that they've gone through a process of accreditation for the coaches in the division, like in the expand hall and the But they've been accredited by Telstra. Uh, I wasn't aware of the level that they've not been accredited uh, with uh, uh, Dr. Pitt. Are they certified? From Telstra's point of view, are they accredited to locate like five? Would you have allowed them to? Yes. 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 <laughs> in, in your quotation to uh, steel storage, did you have any specific conditions you included in your contract for documents with steel storage? For the lowering of the cable? For the, for the work activity, do you have any conditional conditions that you um, included in your contract to steel storage? Uh, standard contract. Standard contract. Just basic, yeah, just the standard contract of the, the work which was purely to lower the cables in the location where the, where the drive line was situated. So you yeah, meant that, that, meant that it was just the lowering that they've been working outside the scope of the cables before contacting the customer. I said it's Yes, it's the story. Yeah, absolutely. They, they would have a, a duty of care mm. um, to make sure that the, the cables are okay. Mm. 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 So you didn't have a condition in your contract that there's still storage had to provide some survey or, or uh, detail of property alignment or anything like that? No. Is it, would it be normal practice of Telstra to give a uh, instruction with a diagram sort of outlining the, the proposed work, alignment, depth, specifying the requirement that Telstra has for is it basically here to go out and borrow? Uh, I believe in this case there was a uh, debt indicator that was purely on stuff just for that area where the driveway was like that. That was, that was the so there was, there was no design as part of your construction? This is your design? Uh, a basic oh, design, I believe. Sorry? I think there was a basic design. Basic design and then then it's the first. You did a supervisor with the job? No. No, I'm not no, I'm representing the the, um, the area of recovery the cost of repairing the damage that's been caused by uh by the steel storage. By steel storage. Thanks. Thanks for reminding me of that. Can you put it by course what was the damage that tilts your something? So the file was damaged. No customs. Yes, it was. Yeah, yeah, the was damaged. The file was damaged. So it had to be replaced like 20 joint. 40 thousand dollars. Yeah, 40 thousand dollars. So it's been cost. So that's just purely the restoration cost. It doesn't take the loss of business from customers. Were there any other loss of serious damage? As far as there was a lot of customer outage time. 
that the money that is made by the majority of the purely the restoration cost of the debt. It appears that the alignment of the asset differs from the bank supplied by the touch Do you see any responsibility on the touch part of that? Well, with, with the plans that we provide, um, it, there's, a, there's a very clear uh, duty care, duty care that, that's issued. So I would have thought in this case that that would have been a two occasions, um, because I understand that we went to die before we did um, to our bank locators twice. I'm uh, very clear that uh, those plans are, I think they've passed as a problem D or problem D, that um, still requires the, the, there's a duty of care of whoever is bidding to make sure that there's not enough structure in those plans and structure in that place. So it's used as a guide on it. It's used as a guide on it. Absolutely. So I would have thought that uh, on the second occasion, Knowing that there have been some changes that have taken <coughs> the responsibility of the um, of the locator um, representing <coughs> steel storage to, uh, to satisfy themselves and mark the locator is actually working for any digging for the place. So. After the damage was repaired, so um, you have to pay another you know, contract if it's all dug up and repaired. Yep. Was the alignment shifted to where it should have been? No. Or was the, was the damage, yes. was that was just repaired and then yes. everything was left there? Yes. So you've left infrastructure inside somebody else's property as it's still today? Yes. Well, you new assets in there, you need a property. Well, not, not initially, because, um, because we weren't aware that it happened. Um, but that has been being followed up now. No, I'm aware of it. Since the new contents were installed, I see the plans you show 2 p Where's the old 2 p say that in situ? I couldn't answer that. That's a good question. But if, if, if Telstra knew that a driller had uh, drilled a conduit into a, into a property, uh, what, what's Telstra's requirement for uh, a driller or for that cable, um, you know, if, they, if a driller was going down, it's actually inside a property? So what, what, what's Telstra's view on the responsibility of the driller um, if they were aware uh, that the conduit had gone into the property? What would you expect? Oh, once we were, if, if we were aware of that, yeah, we would address that with the, the drill, because obviously uh, the work, um, you know, has been the site way. Does that keep the story down on the ground and come back to you in your asset and down with their property? Well, I'd still, I'd still say that it goes back to that duty of care um, initially. On those, so where was your duty of care range with the drill? Uh, yeah, but we weren't sure of that. But, but the most of the city plans and is the energy of the city to make sure there's no infrastructure um, in place. And that's in that. That's our case. Namely, less than the outdoorish drills would be able to be used in the game. So they're not that clear. Yes, sir. Thank you, Ron. The driller. Um, the driller reported issues with rock out there. So, how would Telstra expect uh, a steel company to validate coal in a rock environment? So, we, our requirement is that we need to validate the utility. Yep. If you engage someone to put the utility into an environment that puts it into a dangerous environment because it is now solid rock, would Telstra expect that to be exposed in solid rock? I think the issue here is more around it, was there any duty of care taken in the first place for a time there was any infrastructure there not done with them? Can you guarantee that the drill actually did deviate onto the wood? Guarantee or not guarantee that the drill did actually end up on private property. <laughs> no. no. 
Will you be taking any action against ABC like a paper for access to bid without certification? We've, we've taken action against the people who've engaged ABC, which is still story. Um, I guess this forum will decide you know, what the portion of life may uh, be. Uh, but in this case, we've, we've, um, we've served um, very close to the still storage and engaged ABC. Um, very recovery of the cost of which now is. Have you had any complaints about this drawer previous to this? No, otherwise we wouldn't have been using them again if we had. The drillers are supposed to drill to a, like a, a rough plan or alignment. How are they supposed to know the alignment if they don't know where the boundary is on the alignment? That's not my idea. I think the driller said that um, the boundary of the he, he said he was in, in tune with Telstra's policy. Yeah. Your policy is not to supply the boundary. Yeah. So you're not even saying, I'm not aware of that cable being inside the boundary. But you're not putting the situation in which you can know that it's inside the boundary. I'm not, I'm not sure what you're getting out of it. Just 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 getting out of it. Can, can you actually confirm that you've met your obligations under Schedule 11 of telecommunications oh. Act, that, that you've submitted a land access notification and approved authority from the road authority to put new infrastructure and under Schedule 17 of the schedule <laughs> <laughs> that you've approved authority from the landowner to put new assets in their in their private property? Yeah, we have now, but we didn't. No, but you didn't. No, no, it wasn't intended. No, but in the road authority, you're working in the road corridor, so under Schedule 3, yeah. Clause 11, yeah. did you submit a land access yes. notification to the road authority yes. before the work commenced? Yeah. Okay. What has happened to you? Tell us the supervisor. It was supervising the work. No, we have um, our partner, um, our drilling partner, that, um, that has been assessed. Uh, by uh, Telstra and accredited to do that work on our behalf. Yeah, but what about the supervisor, mate? Mm. The guy who's, who's signed off on the, on the work that's been done correctly in, the, in Telstra's form, and we signed so off based on the plans of the year. Once the work was done. So, you, so as a Telstra, you don't go out and supervise, you don't go out and prove the infrastructure has been done correctly to your standards, your depth, your alignments. Not on every job, no. It's, uh, was ordered at, um, at a random basis. So, so does that mean that you're protecting your asset to its greatest ability? If you're not coming out and making sure the jobs aren't ready? We believe so because of the quality of the uh, contract that's still being engaged, the stringent <laughs> process. <laughs> 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 Is it true you bikes just get into the ground so you can get paid faster? Of course not. What? That's a direction. 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 That's so, um, we we're going to make a, a pie, right? Like I said before, and give you other pieces on who's negligent and who's blameable. Where's that? Is it? No. Where's the pie? Where's the pie? <laughs> Where's the pie? Where's the pie? <laughs> <laughs> plus the cost. <laughs> do, do you feel that any it's one of storage, which, yeah, do you feel that any one party here is? completely negligent? Is there a party that stands up that you say they are solely responsible for this? Okay. <laughs> okay, just go this way. Who thinks steel storage is 100% responsible for this? 100%. Well, I have to say that. <laughs> 
That we didn't even talk about. So. <laughs> but was it a third, a third, a third? Oh, no. 15%. Right. I think Joseph's ultimately responsible because I didn't sit the puzzle with him. I didn't check if he picked down correctly, then he guided through and I ensured that they even strapped it. That right. to for the, for the purpose of this, they, they, no, they never do. You never supervise a job. Exactly. Yeah. So that's what I'm saying. That's coming to this yeah. conversation. They provide information so it only serves as a guide. Yeah. The disclaimer is to provide our consent. Yeah. Well, I think 7030 is located up. Sure. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he didn't do his job properly, that's number one. <laughs> and the driller didn't do his job properly, that's number two. Mm -hmm. but, you know, but at play. the end of the day, but what about steel storage for engaging in a non-certified locator? Yeah. Well, he wasn't. He had, he had a Telstra code page. Okay. Well, and he was locating Telstra. Yeah. And he was locating power as well. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. But that's got nothing to do with yeah. Telstra. Yeah. What about steel storage asking him to validate his marks? Steel storage did not ask him to validate his marks the second locator. No, but as no, the locator, as the locator, yeah. it is his job. That's why he's there. Not if you don't pay for it. If you don't get paid for it, like, he can say to Steve, oh, sorry, he can say that to steel storage, I recommend you put off and see as the AES still story says, no, nah, don't worry about it, it should be right to trace it over it. Absolutely. So they have right. so he's if he'd done his job right. properly and he'd have seen right. that the company was out there. But now I don't want to spend the money. He's done it. 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 So therefore, steel storage shouldn't have excavated because there's no validation done. Yeah, but he didn't do his job though. Steel story to develop that. Back and back. Yeah, well, oh, oh, yeah. Well, yeah. Well, 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 this is two problems. So the, the, the main problem is, is, is who's responsible for actually uh, for, for, for allowing the conduit to be damaged. Um, so the drill is responsible for the conduit being in the wrong spot. But the locator is responsible for actually not attempting to locate a conduit that he was physically there that he'd see. So the locator is responsible for the damage. Um, uh, and the, the drill is responsible for another tissue yeah. visual around And the steel stories didn't validate before they estimated. So they've got to take responsibility. And if you drew it, that's 100%. Yeah. If, if that's what the yeah. service dog heard or whatever, that's sweet. Yeah. 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 Telstra's yeah. duty yeah. care state, you must validate before you estimate. Yeah, but then Telstra's plans and you say there were four conduits there. There wasn't four conduits there. There were only a the yeah, yeah, we're, all, we're all in a room and we're all, we're all trying to get to the same point. At the end of the day, we're all going to probably do the job very, very similar, but we can't agree on one thing of who's to blame, 100% or even 30%. Uh, this, because of the, the, the way that the job rolled, if, if, you know, if they had put on the right alignment, it wouldn't happen. If they had a bottle, it wouldn't happen. If they had a light going better, it wouldn't happen. If the plans had to be changed, it wouldn't happen. If the ball had to be correct, it wouldn't happen. But we've got five. Piece of shit that turned into major, and we're all points blame to someone else, which was the whole intention of this shit fight. <laughs> One person can't be blamed. No, the, the full process was not followed, and that's called damage. One person had done something a little bit different, wouldn't happen. Whose insurance, uh, you know, if we were sitting up here, whose insurance does everyone think would have to pay for this claim? The locators, the driller, and the. It's a Including the Telstra, including the steel, including the escalator, including the locator. You've got to, 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 you've got to,
some might be a little bit more, there might be, yes. there might be more percentages, but five people were named, including self or suicide. But not following up, or not making sure it was right or whatever. Again, my opinion, I can't. And, and you, you yes, see you have, it's a substrate in the contract. Sure. Yeah. <coughs> oh, yep. So, yourself as an expert, and the young lady, I can't remember your name, uh, I want to hear your opinion, your, your professional opinion, and where this might, where we would listen. Um, and the, the reason, reason, the reason, I'm, I'm well, not a litigator, um, so, uh, the reason for all these matters and that uh, sell out of court with the insurance companies is because they want certainty. Right? They, they, a lot of these matters don't make it to court because of that. Um, so, in terms of who's going to pony up the money to pay off these things, it's not uncommon that everyone would get all the insurance companies would, would come in and put some money in to make it go away. Okay? Um, because it's cost litigation, it's expensive. <clears throat> So, so, so in, in that scenario, what you're saying is the drill up the contractor, the locators, insurance companies will get together and pay Telstra, who are also... Well, Telstra's going to have to actually that be repaid as well. Okay. They'll get some grants. Yeah, yeah, they have to get some grants. So if they're going for the $40,000 and it's you know, obviously you know, still storage and uh, maybe still okay to be hit and the original uh, drill um, you'd be brought into it a little bit. Wasn't it steel storage you go after Telstra and buy some contract that they entered into? Well, I will leave again. I don't know. I'm just saying. It's like a bolt swipe. Anyone? You're told the place we've got. I've got a question for Ian. So I just want to get this clear. There was, there's two conduits only still. And the copper one, yep. that just maintained its the same. No, well, well put it on the correct line. Yeah. And it, but the drill shop says that there's two. No, the driller said. Yeah, that's right. The driller said, oh, something got happened, and they had to drill do a second drill. But I can't find the bore. That's why they had to drill it. Sorry. They might have been damaged in the first place, and that's why they had to drill it. We don't know that scenario. That's how. No, but it's still been in situ. Yeah. They always say not dead. They're in situ. But they're not dead. They're still damaged. They're not usable. Very little notice, and uh, big enemy goes through. Yeah, we, we gave them a, a very small sheet, sheet, sheet sheet, and basically said, "Here, here's the deal. If you get a question asked not on there, wing it." These guys did great. Um, we've got a special treat here. We got a little bag for them. And we also appreciate uh, Chelsea and Mike stepping up to take this on. Thank you, guys. Thanks, Thanks. 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 Thanks.